Maui, Hawaii. In a heart-wrenching catastrophe, a colossal wildfire tore through the idyllic landscape of Maui, leaving a trail of destruction and despair in its wake. The inferno, further fueled by a massive windstorm, raged across the island with relentless force, resulting in what is now being recognized as one of the deadliest wildfires in American history. As flames leapt from ridge to ridge, the tranquil island paradise turned into a scene of chaos and devastation. The wildfire, which began as a small blaze, quickly escalated into an uncontrollable conflagration, with gusty winds propelling the flames at breakneck speed. Entire neighborhoods were engulfed in a matter of hours, reducing once vibrant communities to smoldering ruins. The toll of this disaster is nothing short of staggering. Reports indicate that at least 111 lives have been tragically lost, with 20 individuals suffering injuries of varying degrees. 100 people remain unaccounted for, their whereabouts a cause for grave concern. The blaze has left a harrowing mark on Maui's population, with over 11,000 individuals forced to flee their homes seeking refuge from the advancing flames. The destruction wrought by the wildfire is truly astonishing. Approximately 2,200 buildings, ranging from family homes to local businesses, have been reduced to ashes, leaving a stark reminder of the indiscriminate wrath of nature. The landscape, too, has suffered irreversible damage, with an estimated 3,200 acres of land scorched beyond recognition. Last night they said the death toll is 80. That's it's not, it's not correct. They're not reporting it correctly. I don't know why they're not reporting it correctly. There's hundreds, if like at least 600, if not thousands of people who are dead in the streets, in floating in the ocean. There's over 3,000 homes that have been burned to the ground. There is no help here on the ground. All it is is residents pulling together. My whole entire truck is full of supplies right now. Just residents going to the store, going to Walmart, going to Costco, buying as much as they can, driving it straight into Lahaina. I went there last night and well, there was a fire that started and we got so scared we weren't able to drop off all the supplies. The financial toll of the disaster is equally staggering, with property damage estimated to reach a staggering $5.5 billion and counting. The economic ramifications are sure to be felt for years to come as families, businesses, and communities grapple with the aftermath of this devastating event. Amidst the ruins of their communities, many residents are expressing deep dissatisfaction with what they perceive as a lackluster and inadequate government response. One prominent issue of concern has been the failure of emergency sirens to sound the alarm, leaving some to wonder if timely alerts could have saved lives and allowed for a more orderly evacuation. This oversight has sparked a chorus of criticism, with residents demanding answers and accountability for the perceived breakdown in communication. Do you regret not sounding the sirens? I do not. And the reason why... So many people said they could have been saved if they had time to escape. Had a siren gone off, they would have known that there was a crisis emerging. And as we know, so many bodies were found in the ground as the flames caught their heels. Give you the, answer? the sirens, as I had mentioned earlier, is used primarily for tsunamis and that's the reason why many of them are found almost all of them are found on the coastline the public is trained to seek higher ground in the event that the siren is sounded had we sounded the siren that night we're afraid that people would have gone malka and if that was the case then they would have gone into the fire by the way i should also note that there are no sirens malka or on the mountainside where the fire was spreading down so even if we sounded the siren, it would not have saved those people on the, on the mountainside. In a further blow to the credibility of the response efforts, reports have emerged indicating that some firefighters prematurely departed the scene, believing the fire to be under control when it was far from extinguished. We do know of people that uh, just went past a lot of the barriers and they made it alive. Um, I wish there was just more communication um, right after the fire or, you know, started and the the, the 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 firemen didn't leave. They left the fire early. Earlier in the, the that fire started early that morning, and we were told at noon that the fire is out. The, the police are, or the firemen are going home. Everything's safe, um, but that obviously wasn't true. But um, yeah, unfortunately, all of our routes were basically bought, blocked by police and it pigeonholed and forced us down into Lahaina town on French Street, which is an absolute death trap. 
This misjudgment has left residents feeling abandoned and underserved during a critical moment of need. As the scale of the disaster became more apparent, firefighters were forced to re-engage with the inferno, facing even greater challenges in their efforts to contain the raging flames. Amidst the chaos and confusion, speculation has arisen regarding the origins of the wildfire. One prevailing theory suggests that the powerful winds that swept through the region may have knocked down a power line, inadvertently sparking the initial blaze. However, conspiracy theories have also taken root, with some residents speculating that the government deliberately set the fire to drive down land prices, a claim vehemently denied by officials. Amidst the devastation and heartache that has befallen Maui, critics are pointing to President Biden's reluctance to address the wildfire crisis as a missed opportunity to provide comfort and reassurance to the affected residents. Despite calls for a strong and empathetic response, the president has thus far remained conspicuously absent from the discourse surrounding the disaster, leaving some to question his priorities and leadership. Talk about the Hawaii response, Mr. President. And, uh, and let, let me say, address that devastating wildfires, some of which are still burning in Hawaii. They've claimed the lives of 99 people so far, and they haven't cleaned things up yet. The deadliest wildfire in more than 100 years. A whole city destroyed. Generations of Native Hawaiian history turned into ruin. I've spoken to Governor Josh Green multiple times and reassured him the state will have everything it needs from the federal government. I immediately approved the governor's request for an expedited major disaster declaration. That's a fancy word of saying whatever you need, you're going to get. And that'll get aid into the hands of people who desperately need it, who have lost their loved ones, who have lost their homes, their livelihoods, who have been damaged and destroyed. Former President Donald Trump has taken to social media to extend a heartfelt message to the people of Maui. I would like to express my sympathy and warmest regards to the people of Hawaii, and specifically all of those who have been so gravely and irreparably hurt by the tragedy of the wildfires in Maui, something the likes of which have seldom been seen anywhere at any time. The death caused by this Catastrophic event will be far worse than ever expected now that houses and cars and other areas are being inspected. The sad thing is, it should never have happened. Our government was not prepared, and very importantly, the aftermath is going very poorly with the governor of the island wanting to do nothing but blame it on global warming and other things that just happened to pop into his head. When asked about it today, as he was getting into a car, perhaps coming home from the beach, where he has been spending a great deal of time, Crooked Joe Biden, the most incompetent president in the history of our country, with a laugh and a smile, said he had no comment on the death and the tragedy. To say no comment is oftentimes fine, but to be smiling when you say it especially against such a tragedy as this, is absolutely horrible and unacceptable. It is a disgraceful thing that Joe Biden refuses to help or comment on the tragedy in Maui, just as he refused to help or comment on the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, for a very, very long time. In any event, hopefully everyone will be able to pull together so that a horrible situation does not get even worse. To the families affected, I give you my love and sympathy. Nothing can ever replace your loved ones, but you will always have the memories and will feel their great love surrounding and embracing you. Together, we will continue to carry their legacy forward, and I love you all very much. Thank you. That does it for today's newscast. Oh. Remember, I'm the fake one. You all are the real ones. Remember to always verify which charity you donate money to. Most are scams. So before you donate to help the people of Maui, do some basic research. Have a nice day and God bless you.